Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. What's going on, everybody? I am Milan Jordan, and this is the MMA Daily Blitz, brought to you by FanStream Sports, powered by DSP Media. Hey, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you consume your podcast. Check out our YouTube page, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Milan Jordan. All right, last weekend, the UFC was back in Miami for the first time in 20 years. Uh, UFC 287 was headlined by a rematch for the middleweight championship between Israel Adesanya and then champ Alex Pereira. Uh, Not a whole lot of action in the first round. Izzy got some shots in. Uh, Pereira landed some leg kicks uh, that proved to be uh, something that he would keep using throughout the fight. Uh, Late in the second round, uh, Pereira had Adesanya against the fence, landing some more leg kicks that were really effective. Uh, he starts getting a bit more aggressive, maybe uh, more of a uh, hunter type thing. Uh, but then Adesanya countered and knocked Pereira out, putting him to sleep as Israel Adesanya regains a UFC middleweight championship with a second round key KO at 421 of round number two. Uh, this is Adesanya's first win over Pereira in four tries. Uh, in addition to the UFC 281 win, Pereira uh, also beat Adesanya in both of their fights in glory kickboxing. Uh, after one of those fights seven years ago, Pereira's young son uh, mocked Adesanya uh, by imitating him getting knocked out right in front of him in the ring. And Izzy, well, he didn't forget. Uh, immediately after the fight ended, Adesanya did Pereira's shooting an arrow celebration uh, and, and found Pereira's son in the crowd, pointed at him, and then imitated his dad getting knocked out. Uh, in the post-fight uh, press conference, Adesanya said he didn't forget that and admitted that he is petty. But uh, backstage, these two pitter rivals uh, seemingly buried the hatchet by exchanging pleasantries and respect. Uh, but again, Israel Adesanya regains the UFC middleweight championship. And some are arguing, is he the greatest uh, middleweight of all time? Well, you got Anderson Silva in that mix. So he's up there for sure. He's on a Mount Rushmore for middleweights uh, in MMA for sure. Is he the greatest at this point? Hard to say because, again, I mean, Anderson Silva, for what he did for years and years and years, uh, did he hang on a little bit too long the end of his career? I don't think that tarnishes uh, Anderson Silva's uh, legacy, just like I don't think the loss to Pereira uh, last year tarnishes Izzy's uh, legacy. But, I mean, if he's not, he's up there amongst the greatest middleweights of all time, that's for sure. So, what's next for both fighters? There was some talk maybe. There would be a trilogy in MMA between these two since they both won one fight in this uh, MMA matchup. Uh, again, Pereira, he won the title, uh, then he lost it. Does he have a chance to get it back? Well, it looks like that's not going to happen because uh, Pereira announced this week that uh, he's going to move up to light heavyweight, uh, 205. Seems to be a better fit to me uh, for Pereira. He's a big, he's a huge middleweight. And to be honest with you, the only reason he got the title shot was because of his past history uh, with Israel Adesanya, uh, you know, because he was he was fairly new in MMA in the UFC, so he didn't really, you know, have a he had one huge win maybe over Sean Strickland. Uh, outside of that, he won, but wasn't against necessarily a who's who. But again, it was his past history with Israel Adesanya and his trash talking that got him that title shot. Uh, but again, Israel Adesanya regained, and, and in that first meeting. Izzy was winning the fight, uh, but Pereira uh, always one punch away from winning it, and that's what he did. In the rematch, Israel Adesanya ends up winning, regains the championship, So, but Pereira uh, is going to move up to uh, light heavyweight. As for Israel Adesanya, who's next for him? Is it Kelvin Gastelum, who uh, got a win on the prelims at uh, UFC 287? Perhaps another meeting with Robert Whitaker. I mean, Robert Whitaker is... Arguably one of the, you know, probably the best middleweight not named Israel Adesanya. However, they've met twice. Adesanya has beaten them both times. So I don't know if there's really a, a market for that right now, but uh, maybe that will happen down the road. How about Drickus Duplessis? Uh, he's a top 10 middleweight now. Uh, there's some uh, online uh, some uh, online back and forth, some dialogue between these two. So it might be much of the same between Israel Adesanya and Drickus Duplessis that you saw between Izzy and uh, Alex Pereira, uh, where Drickus do play C. I mean, he's probably the only top 10 guy that Adesanya has not fought. So that could be it. Who knows? We shall see. Uh, but again, Adesanya, I mean, he's virtually clean out the division. So uh, we'll see what's next for him. Uh, some people were talking maybe Israel Adesanya moves up to 205. 
no, he's a middleweight. He, he's a middleweight. He's too light for 205. So, uh, and he's going to stay at 185 and why not be the middleweight king? Uh, so, uh, but as to who and when he'll fight next, uh, we'll st- stay tuned for that. All right, the co-main event. It was Gilbert Burns uh, defeating Jorge Masvidal via unanimous decision. Uh, the striking was virtually even, but uh, Burns was able to secure four takedowns. And that seemed to be the difference in this one. The win p- puts Burns in line for a shot at the welterweight title. Whether he's the next opponent for champion Leon Edwards or if he has to wait for Leon Edwards and Colby Covington to take care of business first. Uh, but real quick on Leon Edwards, the UFC was rumored to have a pay-per-view in London in July. Uh, Edwards said in an interview with, uh, I believe it was Sky Sports, that uh, July would be too quick of a turnaround after his trilogy fight went over Kamara Usman last month. Uh, so that Edwards, he's eyeing the UFC 294 card in Abu Dhabi uh, this October. Meanwhile, for Jorge Masvidal, after the fight, he announced his retirement, ending his long, storied career in his hometown of Miami. Uh, Masvidal fought for over 20 years, 52 pro fights, finishing with a record of 35 and 17. Uh, the end of his career, uh, you know, his last win came in 2019. He lost his last four fights, but a fan favorite and a guy just. The picture of perseverance, for sure. I mean, he fought back in the uh, old days around Miami in the uh, Kimbo Slice uh, backyard brawls. Uh, he came up, uh, you know, through Strike Force, uh, also through uh, uh, Bellator, and eventually coming on to the UFC and capitalized uh, with his personality and his uh, you know no frills, no no BS attitude. Uh, fan favorite won the BMF title over Nate Diaz in 2019. Uh, got a couple title shots that he fell short, but. Again, one of the more popular fighters. Again, one of the more uh, popular fighters uh, over the last few years, that's for sure. And again, just a picture of perseverance for uh, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, again, he has some stuff outside of the octagon going on, and he has his own game bread promotions and boxing and bare knuckle fighting. So he's going to concentrate on that. Uh, some people are speculating: Will he fight on his own in his own promotion? We'll see, but for now, Jorge Masvidal is uh, enjoying, uh, is going to retire, and uh, definitely seen his last MMA fight, uh, that's for sure. All right, checking out the rest of the UFC 287 main card. Uh, Rob Font defeated Adrian Yanez in a first-round TKO. Uh, Kevin Holland uh, KO'd Santiago Panza Nibio at 316 of the Stone Cold third round. And then opening the main card was Christian Rodriguez, Defeating 18-year-old Raul Rosas Jr. via unanimous decision. Uh, Raul Rosas, uh, again, he's he was undefeated. He won Dana White's uh, Contender Series, 18 years old. Got a bright future ahead of him, but uh, in this uh, this fight, he came up short. But uh, he got a long career ahead of him, that's for sure. All right, also last weekend, he had the PFL, 2023 PFL 2 last weekend. A quick look at the main card, the women's 145-pound champion from last year and the only woman to beat Kayla Harrison, Larissa Pacheco. She beat Julia Budd via unanimous decision. Uh, the other women's 145-pound matchup on the main card also went the distance as Olena Kolesnik defeated Aspen Ladd via majority decision, winning two scorecards 29-28, the third coming up 28-28. Uh, the 2023 PFL heavyweight regular season also kicked off last weekend. Uh, Bruno Kepaloza defeated Matthias Scheffel via TKO in round number one. And the other heavyweight matchup was also a uh, first-round TKO finish as Biagio Ali Walsh defeated Isaiah Figueroa. Uh, and the prelims of the PFL last weekend, it was a highlight reel knockout. You probably saw it on SportsCenter. It was number one on SportsCenter's top plays on Saturday. Uh, in the running for a knockout of the year in all of MMA as Amber Liebrecht uh, with a picture-perfect textbook vicious head kick to knock out Martina Yandrova at 219 of the first round. Uh, check it out. Just look on, you know, look under uh, PFL knockout, uh, PFL two knockout, uh, vicious knockout, and have the sound turn up too. It even sounds nasty. Just foot to skull. Just ooh, it, it was it was a one heck of a knockout. All right, the next pay per view for the UFC is UFC two eighty eight, uh, and the main card. It's been known for a while, but it was officially announced by the UFC over the weekend in Miami, uh, May sixth at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, will be UFC two eighty eight. Headlined by Al Jermaine Sterling, defending his 135-pound title against former two-division champ Henry Cejudo. Uh, the co-main event, former lightweight champ Charles Oliveira will look to get back on a winning track when he faces rising contendo, uh, contender Benil Dariush. 
Uh, last time out, Oliveira, he lost the title to Islam Makachev at UFC 280. Uh, elsewhere on the card, you got Jessa Andrade. She returns to the women's 115-pound division to take on Yan Zhao Nan, uh, while featherweights Bryce Mitchell and Jonathan Pierce will square off. And kicking things off on the main card of UFC 288 will be the return of Kron Gracie as he makes his first octagon appearance in nearly four years when he faces Charles Jordan. Uh, the UFC also announced that it would be returning to Canada for the first time since 2019. Yeah, pre-pandemic. Uh, UFC 289 will take place June 10th at Rogers Arena in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, the main event is going to be a trilogy fight between Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena uh, for Nunes's bantamweight title that she regained from Pena at two, UFC 277 last summer. Other fights on that card will be announced later. All right, this weekend, the PFL is back at it Friday night on ESPN with 2023 PFL 3 with their welterweights and lightweights taking center stage. Uh, last year's welterweight champ, uh, Sadabu C, faces Jara Al Siwawi, uh, the 2022 lightweight champ, uh, Olivier Alban Mercier, goes against Shane Burgos, who is making his PFL debut. After a decent run at 145 in the UFC, but he steps up to 155, and that's where he's going to stay uh, in the PFL. Uh, so, again, uh, Shane Burgos and Olivier Aubin Mercier, that should be a great fight uh, here in the first uh, meeting uh, for the regular season in the 2023 PFL uh, lightweight division. Meanwhile, the UFC back at it Saturday night in Kansas City for a fight night card. Uh, it's scheduled for a six fight main card. The main event. It's a couple of top five featherweights. Former champ Max Holloway is back in action, one of the more popular UFC fighters. Uh, he's going to take on Arnold Allen in the main event. Holloway is coming off his third loss to 145-pound king Alexander Volkanovsky, while Arnold Allen is riding a 12-fight winning streak. His last and only loss of his MMA career was nearly nine years ago. Uh, a win over Holloway would arguably be the biggest of Arnold Allen's career. And it could even give him the winner of the Alex Volkanovsky Yair Rodriguez fight later this year. We'll see come Saturday night, but it should be a, just a banger between uh, Max Holloway and Arnold Allen. Always a great fight when either a lot of action when either of those guys fight and put them together. Should be one heck of a fight come Saturday night. All right, checking out the rest of the main card. Uh, I got a featherweight matchup between Edson Barbosa and Billy. Uh, Quarantillo in the light heavyweight division. A couple of matchups there. Dutch, Dustin Jacoby takes on Azamat Mirzakhanov. Uh, also, you got Tanner Boser taking on Iwan Kutalaba uh, in the bantamweight division. You've got Pedro Munoz back in action taking on Chris Gutierrez. And longtime UFC veteran, 41 years young, one of my favorite all time fighters, great guy, Clay Guida, uh, will be appearing in his 61st MMA fight as he takes on Rafa Garcia, who comes in with a record of 14 and three talk about guys who uh always put on action-packed fights clay guida that's for sure just check out his highlight reel if you uh if you don't believe me all right as announced earlier this week last bit of news here was announced earlier this week that jake paul and nate diaz will fight in a boxing match later this year the date august 5th the place the american airlines center in dallas on uh the zone pay-per-view uh, it's going to be an eight-round fight at 185 pounds with both fighters wearing 10-ounce gloves. Uh, Diaz's Real Fight Incorporated promotion, his new promotion, and also Jake Paul's most valuable promotions, they're partnering together for this event. Uh, this fight's going to serve as uh, Nate Diaz's first appearance as a hitting free agency following the end of his UFC run last September. Uh, now, look, Diaz has long been, long been considered one of the best boxers in MMA, uh, both he and his brother Nick. Uh, but this will be his first fight in the squared circle, as opposed to the octagon or cage. Uh, this matchup will also mark uh, Jake Paul's return after he suffered the first setback of his brief professional boxing career, a split decision loss to Tommy Fury back in uh, February. Uh, Diaz and Paul, they've gone back and forth in a war of words over the last couple of years. And finally, they will settle things in the ring come August 5th. All right, folks, well, that'll do it for this episode of the MMA Daily Blitz, brought to you by Fanstream Sports, powered by DSP Media. Please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Follow me on Twitter, at Milan Jordan. As always, thank you for checking out the MMA Daily Blitz. I will talk to you later. <laughs>